Welcome everyone to part 9 of my Windows Server 2025 training series. Today we're going to be covering group policy objects. We're going to be covering configuration and best practices. This video is going to be a little bit longer than a lot of the other videos in this course, mainly because there's quite a bit of things that go into GPOs. Mainly, uh, not just the configuration that we're going to cover, but we're also going to cover best practices along with some troubleshooting tips and tools that will make your lives a lot easier when working with GPOs. So, what are group policy objects? They're simply a collection of policy settings that you define and that can be applied to any number of users' devices that you want inside of your domain. So GPOs are assigned typically to organizational units rather than the entire domain, as that's not a best practice. And we're going to go over that a little more as to what you want in your default domain policy and why you shouldn't throw everything in that policy. On to what we'll be covering in our lab today. First, we're going to import the latest GPO definitions for Microsoft. We're going to go over how to do that. Super quick and easy. Then we're going to use our Windows 11 VM we created in the previous lesson along with our freshly installed RSAT tools to begin managing our first GPO. And after that, we're going to cover some best practices as we create our first GPO. And we're going to go over some additional tools and commands that are going to be useful when you need to troubleshoot and verify your group policies are being applied. Okay, so over in our lab, we're going to connect to our Windows 11 VM. We're going to open up our RSAT tools with the Windows tools here. And we're going to go ahead and open our group policy management editor. And let's go ahead and pin that to the taskbar. Inside of our group policy editor, let's go ahead and perform a quick rundown of what's in here. So if we look, we have our domains listed here. Here's our default domain. If we had multiple domains, we could connect to another forest or another domain, etc. But the important thing we want to note is this default domain policy here. So with this policy, it's just automatically created anytime you create a new Active Directory domain. And the important things to note inside of here are the password policy and account lockout policies. So typically you're never going to need to edit anything in this Kerberos security options or the encrypting file system unless there's some very niche case that you need to edit your authentication tickets with Kerberos. But you will definitely be editing these two at some point in your IT journey. So if we see here, these are the settings that are defined for the entire domain, supplied to everyone inside of it. So this is our password policy. So we have a minimum password length, password age, maximum, etc. So uh, one thing that you'll see a lot of people do, and it's horrible practice, is people will just edit this default domain policy and say, yeah, well, I'm just going to push out this registry change or push out blah, blah, blah. Pretty much anything that they can think of, they'll throw in here. And let me explain why that's a horrible thing to do. So the more things that you throw in here, the harder it's going to be to troubleshoot if there's a group policy issue. That's why I highly recommend leaving this as the only option that you have in here. You can edit any of these existing policies and you'll know that they exist in here but please do not add random policies to this default domain policy. I promise you, you will regret it later and it'll make your life miserable whenever you're trying to troubleshoot issues with group policy objects applying to various devices. So with all of that out of the way, let's also take a quick look at our default domain controllers policy. It's gonna be the same deal as the default domain. It's just automatically created whenever your domain's created. There's not really a whole lot in here. Pretty much nothing that you'll ever have to do, but it just defines uh, uh, files and directories, tells who can shut down the system. It's basically all user rights assignment policies. And this can be locked down as you see fit, but it's pretty secure right outside of the box. So if we break it down into these additional OUs, we'll see from our home office and our computers and users sub OUs, there's nothing in here because we have yet to create any new group policy objects and tie them into these. So let's get into that. But first, we're going to update our group policy object store. Our central store is just going to be a repository inside of our domain that allows us to dump newer group policy objects that Microsoft has released through their various administrative templates. To update our store, we're going to open up Edge and we're going to download these new templates. 
We're just going to search for Windows 11 24H2 administrative templates because this is the most recent version of Windows 11 at the time of this video. So we're going to click our first link and we're going to download. And it's relatively tiny, so it should download pretty instantaneously, or we can get this thing installed. Awesome. So let's go ahead and install. And yes, it's going to tell us it's throwing them in this folder here. And let's let these install, and as soon as they're done, we're going to go to that directory and copy them to our central store on the domain. Now that our templates have been downloaded, we're going to see them in this directory here. We're going to open them up, and we're going to see our policy definitions folder. And we're going to take these, and I'm going to show you exactly where we're going to dump them. So if we look at our domain, you're going to see a net logon and a sysfall. So if we go to Sysfall and we click into our domain, we're going to see our policies. So you can see we currently do not have a policy definitions folder. We're going to copy this in. But to show you where this physically lives, each domain controller is going to have a replicated copy of this. So if we go to Windows, and we're going to go to Sysfall, Domain, and Policies. This is where it's going to be locally on our domain controller. So if when we copy this over, let's just copy it straight in here. And there's quite a bit of files in here, so let's go ahead and let these copy, and we'll loop back up as soon as they're finished. With our policy definitions folder now in our policies folder, I'll show you. You can see we dumped it directly on that domain controller, but now we're going to go to our domain. We're going to check our sysfall folder, policies, and there it is. So really all this share is, is it's a way for all the domain controllers to replicate this information amongst each other to ensure that they have the most recent policy definitions and anything else that changes inside of the sysfall folder. Now that we have the latest and greatest policy definitions, we're going to go back to our group policy management editor and we're going to create a new group policy object. And we'll do something very simple. We'll just call this shortcut for YouTube. So now that we have our policy created, you're going to see that currently it is not scoped to any location. We will have to tie it to an organizational unit. And it'll give you some details. So created, modified, can be helpful if you need to see if a group policy has broken something recently. We see that it is enabled. If we go to our settings, we can currently see that we don't have anything enabled. Kind of reiterates what's already been stated. And then for delegation, you'll see who this is actually going to apply to. So a very important thing to know is when you see this authenticated users group, let's click advanced and check the permissions on that. So by default, authenticated users for any user or computer that's on your domain. So you can see Anyone that's scoped with this uh, group policy, they're actually going to have it applied to them, which is what we want. But if you ever want to delegate this to particular groups, you can actually just unselect this for allow for authenticated users, and you can add whatever security groups you want for your users or devices that actually need the policy. So that's a little more advanced. We won't cover that in this lesson. Let's go ahead and edit our new group policy. This is going to be the shortcut for YouTube. And if you look here, you're going to see policies, preferences. The administrative templates that you see here are actually loaded from that central store that we just updated. But we're not going to use those because we're going to do a simple shortcut. So we're going to go to user configuration, preferences, window settings, and shortcuts. So we're going to right click. We're going to do a new shortcut. It defaults to update, which is what we want because update can create or replace. So for name, we're just going to call this YouTube target type URL. We're going to set this at the desktop. And we're going to say URL is just HTTPS www.youtube.com. A shortcut key, and eh, we don't really care about that. The icon file path would be if you're setting a custom icon. 
which we're not doing that either. So let's go ahead and click apply and OK. So we see it's there and it's listed. So it's going to hit the desktop directory and create that YouTube shortcut. So we can close out of this guy now. And we're going to go to our policy. Let's do a quick refresh. And if we look at our settings, you can see that they're now listed in the object. So that's beautiful. You can do this just as a, if you ever get a second guessing what you just configured, you can hop in and expand these settings and just double check to confirm that everything that you want it to do is actually what it's going to do. All right, so with that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and open up our Active Directory, Users and Computers. And we're going to create a new user account. But let's do that in our home office OU. We're just going to call him test user. You can sign any password you would like. And that's good. We'll leave everything unchecked. All right, so we have our test user. He's in our home office users OU. So to make sure that he gets that policy, we're gonna link an existing group policy object. And we're gonna do our shortcut for YouTube here. So let's go ahead and lab that out and see what it looks like whenever the user signs in and the GPO applies. We have just signed in with our test user account and check it out, there is our YouTube so we click our shortcut and it works perfectly. So you may be wondering how you can double check to confirm that it's the policy applying the shortcut. Let's go ahead and close out of Edge. Of course, it's very, very persistent and they want you to click through these 18 pop-ups before you can. So let's do that, exit out. We're gonna open up a command prompt. And we're going to run a command called GP result. We're going to specify slash R. So we get a return directly to our window here. So if you look, it gives us a quick overview of what GPOs have been applied, as well as some additional information about the user. But the important thing we want to see is down here. So applied group policy objects. There it is. There's our shortcut for YouTube. So we know it applied successfully. Let's dive a little more into the GP result command because it's going to be one of the most useful group policy troubleshooting commands that you'll ever use. So let's open it back up. And this time we're going to run as administrator. And the reason that we're running as admin is because if we run a GP result slash R, we're going to say scope computer. And this is going to return all of our computer policies. So when you do a GP result slash R, it is only going to pick up user based GPOs. But whenever you're running the slash computer, you have to use an administrative account. If you try to use it as a standard user, you'll get access denied. And I'll show you what that looks like here. So standard command prompt. We get the immediate error access denied. So if we go back and look at our computer report, we're going to see group policy was applied from GTDC2, and we just have the default domain policy, and that tracks because we don't have any other computer-based policies currently. So you may be thinking now, that's great and all, but how can I actually see what settings are actively being applied to the computer? So there's a command for that. So we're going to do a GP result slash H and we're going to say C slash computer GPO report dot HTML. And we're going to say slash scope computer. So what's going to happen is this uh, report's going to be exported to HTML format and we're going to get all of those computer based policies that are being applied. So it looks like it's done. We're going to go to this PC. Here's our computer GPO report. 
and check this out. It's super cool because we see our applied GPOs. They're all here. And there's the default domain policy. So it tells us that's pretty much all that's been applied. If we go to our settings, we can actually look and see what settings have been applied. So we can see there's the accounts policy. It tells us the winning GPO is the default domain policy. So that's where these settings are coming from. So it's incredibly handy to run this report. Let's say you have 100 GPOs in your organization and you can't figure out where one particular setting is coming from. You can run this report and it'll tell you very easily where it is. You just have to do a little bit of hunting to figure out what uh, what setting you're looking for exactly. But now that we did it with the computer, let's create a new command prompt. So we can run it in our current user session, and we're gonna do the same thing, except we're gonna do a user report. We're gonna call this GPO user report.html, and we're gonna leave it just as is. The one thing that you may notice is I did not output this report to the root of the C drive. This is because this test user account does not have administrative access to this device. So I'm just pointing it to this directory that's for their uh, main user profile. If we're going to open it up, we're going to see users, test user, and there's our report. Let's go ahead and open it up and check it out. So you can see it has all of our information for the username. We're going to look at our preferences. We don't have any Windows settings other than shortcuts. So we see we have our shortcut for YouTube. And there it is. That's applied from that policy. And if we go down to apply GPOs, it gives us a little reference here as well. But it is a super handy troubleshooting tool. And I can't tell you how much I've used it in my IT career. It's it saved me quite a few times trying to hunt down a really annoying setting that no one could pinpoint. That's going to conclude it for this lesson. I hope this has been informative, and I'd like to thank you for watching. I uh, hope you hang out for our next lesson where we're going to be covering Active Directory best practices, and we're also going to be covering Active Directory sites and services. But again, thank you for watching, and I hope to catch you in the next video.